In this video, I want to talk about the dot product. So the dot product goes by several different names. Uh, the scalar product or the inner product is the, say, the three common ones. And uh, the dot product is an operation between two vectors. So let's give ourselves two vectors. We have a vector A and a vector B. And the notation that we are going to do this operation, which is the, the dot product or the scalar product, is a dot between the vector A and B. Okay, so this is the, the notation for the operation of taking the dot product, scalar product, product, or inner product of two vectors. Okay, so how, what does this give us? It gives us, in fact, a number, which is why it's often called the scalar product. It gives us a scalar as a result. And that scalar can be calculated a number of different ways. One way is that the dot product is equal to the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times the cosine of an angle. So we have to be really careful uh, that we get the right angle here. This angle is defined as the angle between A, the vector A, and B when uh, tail to tail to tail. So what does that mean? So if I have here's A and here's B, then if I put these two vectors tail to tail, I have A, B, and then this is the angle between them when they're tail to tail. So this is the angle that is defined. This is how we define the angle that is uh, in here, this cosine theta, when we calculate the dot product. Okay, so that's one way we can calculate the dot product. Another way is that if we have uh, the components, are if the components are known, of uh, A and B, then we can calculate the dot product by the X component of A times the X component of B plus the Y component of A times the Y component of B. And then if we have a Z component, it's equal to the Z component of A times the Z component of B. So this becomes an easy way to calculate it if we know the component form. So let's do an example that utilizes both of uh, these ideas. We will take the two vectors, a is equal to 3 i hat minus 5 j hat. So b is then equal to 6 i hat plus 2 j hat. So first, what is the dot product? Okay, since we have the components, I think the uh, easiest way to look at this is going to be, uh, to calculate this is going to be using the components. So a dot b is equal to uh, the, the x component of a, which is 3, times the x component of b, which is 6, plus the y component of a, which is minus 5 times the y component of b, which is 2. This is 18 minus 10 is equal to 8. And so the if there were units on this, at the moment I've just had their dimensionless, if, if there were units, then the units would be the uh, uh, the product of the units of vector a and b would be the units of the result, like a, like a multiplication. Okay, so that was calculating the dot product that was using the components. Now, what if I want to find the angle between them? 
what is the angle between them? Well, to get at this, then, I think I would want to use the other form of the dot product. A dot B is equal to the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times cosine theta, where theta is the angle between the two vectors. So, uh, I, I already know the dot product. I've calculated that. That's 8. Um, and I can calculate the magnitudes of each given the components. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have a dot b, that's equal to 8. The magnitude of a, then, is the square root of the sums of the squares of the components. So that's 9 plus 25. If I put that in my calculator, that's about 5.8. 8, 3. The magnitude of B is the square root of the sums of the squares of, of uh, those components. So that's 36, 6 squared plus 4, 2 squared, and so that's the square root of 40. If I calculate that, is about 6.32. So if I go back up, put these, all of these three in here, I find cosine theta then is equal to a dot b, the dot product, over the product of their magnitudes, which is 8 over uh, 5.83 times 6.32. And so I uh, um, put that all in my calculator, take the, the inverse cosine, and that gives me an angle of 77.8 five degrees. So we have two ways to calculate um, our dot product using the, this sort of, I might call this the geometric form because we can use the, uh, the geometry and trigonometry once we have the magnitudes of the vectors and the angle, as well as the component form, which is convenient if we have the components. All right, but I want to explore a little bit uh, some properties about the dot product that it's very important to, to keep in mind. Okay, the first, and these sort of derive from what we know, but I think we want to emphasize them directly. The dot product of parallel vectors is the product of their magnitudes. If A and B are parallel, and this symbol for parallel is parallel lines. So if the vector a and b are parallel, then a dot b is just equal to the product of their magnitudes. And when I say um, parallel, I mean they're pointing in the same direction too. You can also, this is sort of a, a, a jargon we use in physics, and if if I have a and b I would call, if I'm talking about vectors, I would call that parallel. And if I had A and then B pointing the other way, we usually refer this to anti-parallel, which is not... <laughs> Is, is is not you know it's not exactly the opposite of parallel uh, but that's the, the jargon we use to to distinguish if we have vectors that where the the lines themselves are parallel but they're either pointing in the same direction we call parallel or pointing in opposite directions we call anti-parallel and so if they're parallel then uh, a dot b is just the product of a b if they're anti-parallel so this is parallel and then uh, if they're anti-parallel here, then a dot b is equal to negative the product of their magnitudes. And, and that just, and you could see that directly just from their, our geometric definition of the dot product. If they're parallel, theta is zero, cosine is one. And if they're anti-parallel, then theta is 180 degrees and cosine theta is negative one. But that's just sort of to, 
there's no reason to go through that computation in your head each time you encounter this. It's better just to remember this, that if they're parallel, the dot product is equal to the product of their magnitudes. So in addition to that, then, we have if A and B are perpendicular, then A dot B is zero. That's also, you can derive that from because from our geometric interpretation here, if they're perpendicular, cosine of, uh, of 90 degrees is, is, uh, is zero. And, but it's, it is better just to remember this directly because you, you encounter that a lot and you can just identify immediately that if A and B are perpendicular, then the dot product is equal to zero. Okay. The final thing to remember about, well, actually, before we go on, let's, let's talk about um, another way to look at the dot product is to consider the projection of one vector upon another. So let, let's do that. Let's, let's see what that means. Let's say this is my vector A, and this is my vector B. I can always translate my vectors without rot rotating them, so I'm translating them so that they're, they're tail to tail. Now, what if I were to look at the magnitude of A times the projection of B on A? So what does that mean? Well, here's the magnitude of A. And what is the projection of B on A? Well, projection means I take B, I go to the tip of B, I draw a line to A such that it makes a right angle. And the projection of B on A, then, is the length of this line segment, where I draw the line from the tip of B to A so it makes a right angle. Well, what is the length of that line segment? Well, it's the magnitude of B times the cosine of the angle between A and B. So A multiplied by the projection of B on A is AB cosine theta, which is the dot product. So that's another way to think about the dot product. It's giving you the magnitude of, it's telling you the degree to which two vectors are aligned. It's giving you the, the magnitude of one times the projection of one on the other. And so you can see it, it goes the other way as well. Let's say here's A again, and here's B, B. And in this case, if I sort of extend the line out of B, and now I want the projection of A on B, I draw a line from the tip of A to the line that contains B such that it makes a right angle. And so now, the projection of A on B is this line segment. And so B times the projection of A on B is equal to B times A cosine theta. Well, that's just equal to A B cos theta, and so it you can look at it either way. The projection of A on B times the magnitude of B, or the projection of B on A times the magnitude of A. This is another sort of important geometric interpretation of the dot product that's important to have uh, in, your, in your head when dealing with them. So that brings up another uh, sort of important point about the dot product, which is its commutative. A dot B is equal to B dot A. Dot product is commutative. Does that have two M's? I don't know. I may have spelled that wrong. Commutative. All right. Um, and so that's uh, one way to, that's, that's another important point of the dot product. Uh, finally, let's take a look at uh, unit vectors for a minute. Of course, unit vectors are uh, perpendicular to each other, so the dot product of Cartesian unit vectors are perpendicular to each other. And so the dot product of the, um, cart any two other Cartesian unit vectors is equal to zero. Of course, I dot itself is then equal to 1. So any, any uh, Cartesian unit vector dotted with itself is 1. Any Cartesian unit vector dotted with another one is equal to 0. And any vector 
that's dotted on a Cartesian unit vector gives you the component along that uh, axis. And that you can see just from sort of this interpretation that we had before, right? It's the, the magnitude of one vector. So if we look, the magnitude of the unit vector is just equal to one times the projection of the vector of the other vector on on the first vector. So if we look at the magnitude of the unit vector is 1 and the projection of B on I hat is the X component. B cos theta where theta is now the angle between the uh, B vector and the unit vector. And so the the dot product of any vector with a Cartesian unit vector gives us the component uh, along that axis. And then finally, of course, any vector dotted with itself is equal to the magnitude of that squared, and that's again uh, given our easily seen with our geometric interpretation of the dot product.